Hi guys and welcome along. Today we are going to paint some lovely Christmas decorations and Christmas baubles and I'm so excited because we're going to try out some metallic watercolours which is very cool. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right then, time for a bit more Christmassy themed painting. So I mentioned in my intro about met metallic watercolours. Um, you can find the link to these in the episode notes below, but I love to use these. They're called Fine Tech and they are absolutely brilliant and shiny and they behave just like watercolours. But I'm going to put those to one side for a moment because we need to do a little bit of prep. So I've got my uh, it's a ruler set square thing and I find it's really handy when you're painting baubles to just have a straight line um, Just a vertical straight line. So I'm going to just I'm going to paint four baubles today so four rather faint straight lines Pop those in And last one there. Okay, put that to one side as well. We're gradually shrinking down our kit. Perfect. Goodbye pencil as well. Okay, so I'm going to paint for you four different baubles that are currently on my Christmas tree. Um, I've always been a big fan of this sort of vintage style Christmas bauble. Um, but to start things off, let's let's ease ourselves in, shall we, with a lovely simple one. And I'm gonna go for a lovely Christmassy red. And this, the start of this actually really takes me right back to watercolour for beginners, um, where we painted just simple red circles on a page just to see what on earth the water did. So with my size four brush and a fairly sort of large amount of very wet watercolour on my brush. I'm just going to paint a circle and I'm going to paint this one. I'm going to do this one quite high up. And I want this circle to cut across the middle of my vertical line. And I don't know anyone who can paint a completely perfect circle first go. So whilst it's still wet, you can just neaten up that shape and what we're going to do also whilst it's still wet is we're just going to with a clean wet brush we're going to fill in the middle of this bauble and then whilst it's still wet again I'm going to take quite a concentrated bit of red on my brush and I'm just going to paint around maybe like two thirds of the bauble and I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay so the next thing I'm going to do whilst it is just a little bit still wet is we need a little bit of a sort of clasp at the top for our, for our string don't we and I'm going to paint this one in in a sort of pale shadowy mix that I've got just mixed up in the sort of dregs of my palette here as usual it's the sort of blue and brown combination you can add a bit more blue to make it more grey a bit more brown to make it just a little more sludgy and I'm going to just do a little upright there and a little upright just sort of either side of the vertical line and a little arch then I'm going to clean my brush off and now I am going to paint in some little sort of details on that bauble and I'm sort of quite hoping there'll be a little bit of blend and bleed with the bauble And then I'm going to paint a ring nice now whilst that's still wet I'm going to take a bit more of a concentrated color here and I just want to drop it in 
just a tiny bit and if I'm really clever there we go just get a tiny bit of shine on that little ring there so we're going to leave that one to dry fully and we're going to move on to another Christmas bauble shape which I am madly in love with um, and this time we're going to start with what looks like a sort of very clear either a sort of glass bauble or, or a sort of very sort of pale silver metallic bauble and this time we're going to involve our metallic watercolours. So just in the same way as with regular watercolours we have to wake these guys up. So I'm putting a bit of water into the top. These are like pans of watercolour, they're completely dried blocks. So I'm just popping a bit of water into those ones there. What I like to do is sort of include a little bit of the metallic colour in with my regular watercolours but you do have to make sure that you then clean your palette afterwards otherwise your work will be sparkly forevermore and that has happened to me. I remember doing a commission for someone and they were like it's lovely but it's ever so slightly sparkly. Um, right so this time I'm going to do a more sort of, sort of vintage shaped bauble a uh, sort of double-ended teardrop and you should already be able to see a bit of shine going on with this bauble but we're still able to treat it like actual watercolour okay so I'm gonna do one half and then I'm gonna attempt to mirror it it's always quite hard to mirror the shape but it's not a problem because either if you're a bit like me and you're not actually that upset if things don't get completely symmetrical and perfect then you can just leave it or if you're very keen on having a perfectly shaped bauble you can go back in and just even it out but I, I would warn you you can then get into a vicious circle of sort of evening it out a little bit on both sides and then suddenly finding yourself with a shape that's completely different to the one you started off with okay I'm just gonna dip in a little bit of shadow at the top and bottom allow that to travel up the side and we're going to leave that one to just dry for the moment the next one we're going to do I'm going to do this one without metallics uh, for the start at least we're going to do another sort of vintage style bauble that was one I was practicing quite a lot yesterday um, and I'm really pleased with it and I just hope that the practice from yesterday pays off today because sometimes you have a really good painting day and everything goes to plan. Let's see, so it's going to start off lovely, starting off round and then finishing off in a teardrop, so an upside down teardrop. So that was with some rather dilute so it's not as strong as that red that we did at the beginning rather dilute turquoise there and now I want this shape to be a bit softer than the red one what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create an empty circle in the middle here because we're going to do one of those really classic vintage baubles where they almost have a sort of indented shape and then an amazing kind of kaleidoscopic style um, pattern in the middle. I'm pretty pleased with that. So I'm just going to add in a little bit more color to the bottom to really get that tip nice. And then for this one, we're going to like the first one here, we're gonna have a little bit of a bauble holder at the top so I've just sort of sat that up a tiny bit and then I'm going to get some of my shadow I'll put it in here so we don't get too involved with all the silver up there because I do want to show you how you can still create an amazingly sort of reflective looking metallic finish even if you don't have metallic watercolors because 
I think they're fun, but we can also totally achieve it without it. So I've done my little arch over the top, then with my smaller brush. So what I'm doing is I'm sort of doing two downwards and then a bit of a point at the bottom. I mean, you just need to look at, uh, if you celebrate Christmas, then you might have a tree up. It is December whilst we film. Um, so you can use your own tree for your inspiration. Or the wonderful world of the internet has all sorts of amazing looking baubles. I love how these days really anything goes. Um, we've got a few of those sort of funny novelty ones. In fact, I've actually got a Christmas bauble in the shape of a uh, watercolour palette, which my friend bought me this year, which is actually at the top of our tree because it's such an important, <laughs> it's such an important piece for us. Right, so that's a rather nice um, clasp at the top and then with the brush, I use it nice and vertically keep a nice fine point. That's not bad. Try and go back in. Not bad at all. So those tiny little unpainted slivers of space just help create a little bit of shine there. Okay, so the next step for this one, this is quite exciting. I was really excited when I paint, paint, painted this and came up with this yesterday. So I'm going to do in a different blue, difference of turquoisey blue, a blob of very intense colour in the middle. And I'm just, I've given it the tiniest bit of unpainted space. I'm also just making sure it's sort of fairly central. Right, cleaning my brush off and I'm getting more of that shadowy grey. I might just add in a tiny bit of Mars black as well just to get it nice and grey. Okay, it's really watery. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just kiss the edge of that blue centre with my brush and I'm going to fan out to the edge. I actually think I'm going to use a bigger brush for this because I really want to get the... Um... There we go really fan out. You need to have enough water on your brush. Okay, now we're talking. So what's happening here is the colour on the brush, which was initially just the sort of grey shadow, is now picking up a bit of that blue from the centre. And whilst this looks rather messy at the moment, it'll suddenly start to form a bit of an optical illusion. And we'll start to see a sort of reflective centre. Now I'm just going to move that up there because I'm going to turn my page around because that's always a bit easier. So tip of the brush and then fanning it out, squishing the brush down and I'm doing a sort of two pronged fan. Lots of water on the brush. Last one. Oops, a little bit of hair on my brush. Right, really happy with that. That's a lovely start. Now what we're going to do with a slightly smaller brush is get a bit more colour in there. So I'm now going to just do a little brush stroke in the gaps where I can. Lovely. 
Now we're going to leave that one to dry as well and we're going to move on to our last and this one's going to have metallics in again. I'm going to do another um, round one and this time I'm going to involve two colours from the metallics. So I've got a pale pink and we're going to use the lovely gold as well. So I'm going to begin with the pale pink because I think of the two that's probably the less dominant colour and I'm just going to paint a circle so you get a lot of colour on there so just with a clean wet brush I'm filling that in and I'm going to leave just the tiniest bit of unpainted space at the top there and then with the gold what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paint over the bottom half and I'm going to fill it in just with a bit of wet colour And what we're going to do is we're just going to leave all of these now to dry fully and then we're going to add some decoration. I've brought in now a few of my favourite baubles from our Christmas tree. Um, years ago I stumbled upon a little basket of vintage baubles for five pence each in a charity shop and it was about 10 years ago and I remember not really thinking much of it, I just thought I liked them. And then suddenly a few friends of mine who were very trendy were like, oh my God, I can't believe you've got those. Um, because they're just, they're the real deal and you get an awful lot of um, imitations these days, like this one, this is a sort of imitation one but it's the inspiration behind this one and then this is now not what I used to think of as anything vintage because it was on my Christmas tree as a child but now essentially these are from the early 80s so full-on vintage anyway they're probably going to roll around and get really annoying but um, I'm going to start off with this one here with a bit of decoration I'm going to go really really simple and sort of in the spirit of my more traditional uh, old-fashioned decorations or I'm going to use a, a much more concentrated version of the cadmium red we had here and we're just going to do two lines that go around the bauble and then two brush strokes like that and that's it we're just going to leave it at that really nice and simple very understated bauble. The next one, I'm going to use this as my inspiration, some lovely stripes onto the teardrop. So this time I'm going to get some cadmium yellow and I'm going to get a little bit of cadmium orange mixed in. I want a really nice of golden colour and yet I'm not going to use the metallics for this one because we've got a metallic base so let's uh, we're using a size 2 got my fine tip and I'm going to paint in swirls now swirls are something that a lot of people find quite hard I find you've just got to follow the body of the shape you are contouring over. So we need a bit more colour there. So just try to picture the roundness. There we go. And all of a sudden you'll suddenly start to get it. And you can always go back like I'm doing here and just sort of fill in the shape if you, if you need to. 
Okay, now I'm going to get some red. And I'm going to do swirls in between. Now it's important to try and make sure you've got a fine tip on the brush and not too blobby. So sometimes if it's that feels a bit thick, so just swizzle it off and you'll be able to start with a fine point. Once you've got your first colour painted in, the next stripes are usually, usually a bit easier to do because they've got a, a sort of guide. And just make sure you've got lots of water and paint on the brush. Because it's nice if you can just do it in one fell swoop. That looks rather lovely. Now if you want to, you can get a smaller brush and just with a clean wet brush, just make the ends a little bit more dainty. lovely. Okay on to the next one. Here we have, we're going to do some detail on this so I'm going to choose that darker blue colour that now is all pretty much been blended out as it dries. And I'm just going to turn the page because I am going to paint in some little lines that have been a bit of pattern that's been sort of travelling around the outside move these guys out of the way. They're nothing but trouble. Here we go. And then a few little circles. And then what I'm gonna do is just a sort of zigzag line around the edge of this circle, quite sort of loose. I'm not particularly joining anything up to anything. Turn the page around again. And I was really keen to do this one without any metallics because I wanted to show you that you can achieve that metallic looking finish very easily without it because we've done lots of things like that in the past but what I'm going to do now with a clean wet brush I'm just going to blend in the inner points and it can look really iridescent and shiny and amazing even when there's no official metallics going on. So what I want to make sure is that you don't feel like you have to rush out and buy new kit. And what I am going to do is just enhance that central circle just a little bit more and that looks really nice. Okay last one I am going to paint in some deep crimson I think and I'm going to use this one as my 
yeah. inspiration. And we haven't done a top for this one as well, so we can do that. So first things first, I'm going to sort of create a slightly rounded line across the middle. And then I am going to paint in, just trying to look at my inspiration there. It's always good to have a reference. Now that central one will be nice and straight on, but the set, the next ones are going to have a slightly more rounded feel to them. So don't forget that when you're painting round things. You might just see the tip of one over there. So this is a nice use of having metallic again with a little bit of non-metallic decoration on top. I'll just see a little bit of that one there. And then in between. and now we can add a top and I think we should make a gold top to this one so I'm going to get a little bit of my metallic uh, well firstly I'm going to place it in, in a non-metallic manner put my two lines in and my arch over the top I'll move that out of the way and let's grab our metallic watercolour one more time. So I'll use the gold here, so I need to wake it up again. It's very good this stuff, it sort of goes back to sleep and doesn't bother you for a while. You just need a little bit of water to wake it up again. And combining with the actual yellow paint we're going to get a, a nice sort of strong, vibrant coloured bauble top and a little loop for it there as well. So there we go, we've got our lovely baubles. Um, you could always add a little bit of a string to them if you wanted or you could just sort of, I, I quite like the idea of just a sort of single straight line with, with a bit of paint. So I'm going to let that dry fully and then I'll come back and put in some lines and then we'll be done. These are nice and dry now and um, I don't know if you can, if it shows up on camera, but um, the gold and the really subtle silver are really starting to glitter beautifully now. Um, so I'm just gonna finish it off. What I've done is I've rubbed out the pencil on the baubles, but I have extended the pencil up just a little bit. And I'm just gonna turn the page to the side and Shall I do? Oh, maybe I'll take a tiny bit of the sparkly stuff and pop in a little strand with a very small brush using my four tenths. Just getting a nice fine point. And just finishing them off like that. And I think this would be a lovely Christmas card design. Could have them all sort of hanging down from the top. She's goes, that's a, that a central line. No, it isn't really. I'm just going to use, I'm just going to paint my line there. Otherwise the bauble would be hanging all wonky. And last but not least, and I might just, because I can't help myself, use it with a little bit of shadow for this gold one here. Okay. 
Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that. And don't forget, you can find out where to get some metallic watercolours in the episode notes below. So I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for your support because your support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed the video, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on with this painting. And if you subscribe then you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye!